اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا فيس السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته may the peace and blessings of allah be upon you all welcome back to our program mtk is time which is being brought to you by mtk international gambia studio so in this program we are going to discuss on various topics regarding the life of the holy uh, life of the prophets but for this episode we are going to deal with a very important topic which i believe is going to be very very beneficial that is the relationship between parents and their children and of course the holy quran has emphasized this very well and yeah it has been a very important matter which has been discussed during the life of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so without wasting much time let us kick start and as you all know uh, again please you can enjoy the program and if you have any question you can please write it down and you can send us the question so that we can able to uh, answer that question by the grace of allah so without wasting much time let's start So as always as tradition demand we start with the recitation from the Holy Quran. Can we hear the recitation from the Holy Quran by our brother Ibrahim Kasama? Please give us the recitation. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. وَقَالَ رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍّ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا Okay, Jazakumullah, thank you very much for that recitation we all had. This is what we are going to discuss about today. And this is Surah Bani Israel. So let us have just the translation first before we go into discussing the topic. Please, let's hear from Brother Masroon. Give us the translation. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaykum as-salamu wa rahmatullah. Translation. The Lord has commanded worship none but him and so kindness to parents if one of them or both of them attain old age we do never say unto them any word expressive of disgust no reproach them but, but address them with excellent speech and lower to them the wing of humility out of tenderness and say my lord have mercy on them even as they nourish me in my childhood Islam. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I think we all heard it. As I said, we are going to discuss about what should be the standard relationship between the parents and their children. Islam has talked about everything. And the Holy Quran has told us this. Ma farratna fil kitab min sayin. He says, there is nothing that borders this ummah today that the Holy Quran has not clarified. So therefore this is also very important thing as i said most often than not we are ever allah the almighty talk about obe- worshiping allah he talk about obedience to parents and here he says thy lord has commanded that ye worship none but him and that ye show kindness to parents allah the almighty has command you should not worship any other being apart from him and after that what did he ask you should obey your parents so what this verse is portraying there are two things first of all we are asked to obey allah and we are asked to worship none but him alone and after that we have to obey our parents that shows how important our parents are when it comes to our connection with allah the almighty 
meaning it is going to be practically impossible for you to obey Allah and worship Allah without being obedient to your parents. But the Holy Quran has also given us a condition where we are not expected to obey our parents. And that is, what is that? Where should we not obey our parents? That is, yes, give her the mic. That if when they ask us to disobey Allah. The, when they ask us to associate anything, understand, with Allah, associate partner with Allah, that is to disobey Allah the Almighty. That is the only time we are asked not to obey them. But other than that, Allah the Almighty says we should obey them in all their command, in all their advices. You understand? So, in this verse, Allah the Almighty has made it very clear that there are two important things. He said, human being, it is impossible for you to pay all what Allah the Almighty has provided you. Because why? We cannot pay Allah. Allah the Almighty has created us when we did not ask him to do so. He created the sun, the earth, and water, and bring food, shelter, everything for us. Do we demand? Can we pay Allah for this? No. But the only little thing that he required from us is not to associate partner with him. That's all. He knows we cannot pay. But to that of the parent, he gave a positive reason that at least we can try and to, to, to return some of the virtues that the, our, 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 our parents have been uh, rendering to us when we are young. That's why he says, وَاخْفِدْ لَهُمَا جَنَا حَزُولِ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَكُرَّبِّرْ هَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبِّعَانِ سَغِيرًا Lower your, وَاخْفِدْ لَهُمَا جَنَا حَزُولِ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ He is saying that in the translation, uh, it says, and lower to them the wings of humility out of tenderness, and say, my Lord have mercy on them, even as they nourished me when I was a little child. Meaning, you should be very kind towards your parents. And he in fact says, you cannot even say, oh, to them. Meaning, this is, when it comes to Arabic language, often is a very harsh word of respond. So you cannot respond in such a manner towards your parents. Because why? Your parents have been like a rap. That's why I say Kamara Bayani. The way our Lord has created us and pro give us protection. That is the same way that our parents are also imitating. Understand? When we are young, they take care of us. When we are sick, they take us to hospital and give us everything that we need that we cannot do for ourselves. That's why they become our rap. You understand? So therefore, when we are mature enough, when we reach the level of maturity, at that time, they are aging. And that's why the Holy Quran is used when they are old. Meaning that time, they cannot do many things for by themselves. So you, it is you individual who is expected to try your utmost level to support them, assist them, be kind towards them, and helping them <coughs> when the need arises. So it is very important. That is the only way that you can able to uh, say that, yes, I'm trying to do my best, understand, to, 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 to pay what, or to return what my parents have been doing. But although you cannot do enough that you can able to say that, yes, I have paid my parents completely or fully of what all, all what they have done to, for me. You understand? So also, we know there are a lot of responsibilities that are given to parents too. As children, we are asked to obey them and we are asked to help them. We are asked to be kind towards them. But parents also are given their uh, responsibility towards us. That's what the Holy Prophet Muhammad said, Akrimu <coughs> awladakum, respect your children. <coughs> Understand? In another place it says, Sa'u bayna awladikum filatiya, meaning be fair when you are providing for your children. Like make it equal. You should not choose one above the other. Give them their required need if you have but don't be taking one over the other or don't so love much love over the other and they are all your children that is completely unacceptable in islam and also akrimu awladakum respect your children how are you going to respect them does that mean that the parents have to be going and greeting their children every single morning no this means that you should give them what they're supposed to have 
when they are young. The lack of education, food, shelter, and clothing, so that they cannot be ignorant, and so that they cannot be people whom you know that they, they, they are useless in the society. Because if you are ignorant, you become ineffective in the society. That's why the Holy Quran says, Wool those who know and those who do not know be equal. So if you have your children, you do not educate them, you do not provide them proper clothes, and they are used to that kind of uh, attitude, when they grow up, they will not be that much productive because they don't know anything. They are ignorant. So therefore, parents are also ordered or they are commanded by the Holy Prophet Muhammad son to take care of their children properly. In another place, the Holy Quran says, do not kill your children for the fear of poverty. Does not mean that take them, take a knife and kill them because of you are poor. No, it means you do not give them education, you do not give them food, you do not give them shelter, you do not give them clothing. It's like you are killing them. They are spiritually dead, they are morally dead. You understand? So these are some of the things that uh, the parents are asked to do towards their children and children are also giving uh, their responsibility towards their parents. So I know we cannot able to exhaust all this. So if you have any question that or any comment regarding what we have discussed, you can please come up. Yes, can we hear from Mama? Yes. Majula, please. You have S a comment or commission? Uh, question. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa what is the best way to live with your children? The best way of living with your children. The Holy Quran has mentioned it. You see, I want to narrate this. The Holy Prophet Muhammad was the best person towards his family because he said, Khairukum khairukum ana khairukum li ahli. The best among you is the one who is best in his family and I am the best towards my family. We learn in one narration where the Holy Prophet Muhammad came home and he entered the house. Hazrat Fatima was there and Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha, they were in the house. So the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came and sat, sat near Hazrat Fatima, that is the daughter of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallam. So he pulled Fatima and said something. He whispered something in the ear of Hazrat Fatima radiallahu anha. Aisha did not hear, he, the Holy Prophet did not want anybody to hear it. So when he said this, then Aisha start, uh, Fatima started crying. Then again, he pulled Aisha, uh, Fatima and it's whispered something, then Fatima laughed. But nobody knows what they discussed. So Isa was curious to know what the Holy Prophet told Fatima and for until Fatima cried. And he was curious again, what did the Holy Prophet told Fatima until Fatima laughed. So when they left the house, Isa called Fatima and asked, what did the Holy Prophet told you? He said, am I here to disclose the secret of the Prophet of Allah? I'm not going to do that. So when the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sassam died, when he passed away, then Aisha said, now I think you can tell me what the Holy Prophet said. He said, yes, now I can tell you. He said, the first time he whispered in my ear is that, he said that the every year Jibril come to me once and recite the Holy Quran. But this year he came to me twice, he recited the entire Quran. That means my time is up. I'm coming to leave this world soon. So that make Fatima cry. He said, when Fatima cry, I told Fatima, the whole, he told me, are you going to cry? Are you not happy that you are going to be among the, the first people to enter paradise? Then that's the time Fatima then laughed. This is what the Holy Prophet said. So there was that trust, there was that understanding between the Holy Prophet and his children. You see, because of the Holy Prophet taught his children how to keep secret and how to be respectful towards their parents and how to be obedient towards their parents, that's why Fatima he decided not to disclose close any secret of his parents. So this is what we are expected to do. What our parents told us, we should not be going loitering around, around and be telling our uh, friends, this is what my father says, this and that. No, it should be between you and your father or your mother. Understand? This is the best way that love and honesty and truthfulness between children and parents should be mutual. The next thing we have, I think it's clear now. Good. Is there any, any question? What, 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 what do you understand in general? We can say now, what have you learned that you know that you will want all those people who are watching us to also understand? Do you have anything to say? Yes. So can you tell us, please, what have you learned from this, this, thing, this, this lesson we have done? Wa alaikum 
I have learned that children should respect their parents and their parents also should respect it's their children. It's reciprocal. That's what exactly we have talked about here. The, the ch children have their responsibility towards parents and parents have their responsibility towards children. So what we are demanded to do, everybody should know. The children should know what is their responsibility towards their parents. And the parents should also know fully well what is their responsibility towards their children and which we have already discussed here, not so. Understand? So this is what time allowed us. We will come to the next episode, inshallah, by the grace of Allah the Almighty. And we would like to discuss on that episode about dua, the importance of dua. Why is dua so important in our life, especially when we say the religion of Islam? So thank you very much for your participation until you come on our way. Dear viewers, we have come to the end of another episode. As we all know, we are discussing about that what should be the relationship between parents and children in light of the teaching of Islam, which we have a lot of evidence, which we have a lot of uh, uh, things that you know that we are taught by the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as well. So therefore, let us try and stick to and reflect and ponder over this and follow fully on the instruction of the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallam, so as to be better people in the society, so as to meet our Creator in the best manner, be Kalbin Salimin. Thank you very much until we come uh, on our way next time. I am your host, Sayyid Sambaso, until we come on your way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.